welcome. Um, thank you all for being here today. Um, I'd like to just kind of acknowledge that this is not the way we would prefer to do it. Um, I think that we all get a lot out of the sort of discussion aspect of being in the same room and um, hearing each other's ideas and responding to one another. And we think about it more as a conversation. Um, so I appreciate you um, being open to this as a way to learn something new and try new things and develop new skills. Um, I, for one, am gonna miss the kind of back and forth conversations that occur. That does a lot for me as a teaching artist and as an artist. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm from Youth in Focus, which is actually right down the street from Garfield. And we're an after school program for teens and we um, provide arts access in the form of photography and video. And what we've been really focusing on lately is trying to um, amplify teen voice. And so trying to teach photography and um, art literacy as a way that teens can tell their story and uh, be effectively heard. So that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I know that you guys have uh, probably watched the video with Adam and done your identity self-portrait, um, as well as the I Am poem. And maybe you've looked at Benji's video too, which talks a little bit more about resistance and protest and the power of images. Um, so today we're gonna talk about uh, something that sort of builds on both of those things. Um, before we jump in, I'm gonna take a note from Adam's book, and do a quick mindfulness exercise. So same kind of idea, just gonna relax into your seat kind of feet on the ground, hands out in front of you. You can close your eyes if you want. Head high, deep breath in. One more deep breath. All right. Thank you for doing that. So we use mindfulness sometimes as a way to transition between one activity to the other. It sort of centers us in the moment. Um, a lot of what we're uh, sort of faced with right now is jumping from one thing to another, and to, from phones to computers to work or jobs. And so it's nice to kind of take that time to just um, relax and center yourself right here, right now. The challenge today is to think about what's essential to you and photograph something essential or someone essential in your community. Uh, we've been thinking about essential workers quite a bit. We've seen a lot in the news about it. There have been protests about it even. And so we think about essential workers maybe in the sense of doctors and people in healthcare. Uh, so you've probably seen these images with the doctors and nurses who've worn masks for 12 hours or so. Um, these really evoke a feeling and evoke an emotion. So we're really, um, kind of touch us on a visceral level. We can see the pain, the kind of the suffering there. There's also another group of essential workers who are risking their lives for us. And those are people on the front lines that we don't always think of. So people who are delivery drivers, um, people who wash dishes in commercial kitchens, um, people who are in the gig economy like Uber and Lyft and DoorDash. So they're delivering our goods to us. Um, and then there's another group too of people who've been laid off um, or furloughed or people who don't have jobs right now because of the virus. Um, so it really brings into, calls to attention what the word essential means, what that means to us in our community. Um, lastly, there's something we're talking about in my family a bunch is what is essential now versus what was essential two months ago. So pre and post virus, what do we, um, what do we, what do we think that we couldn't live without? So maybe two months ago, I would have told you, I can't live without going to my favorite restaurant once or twice a week. Um, now, of course, I can't do that. Um, that thing has become less essential. But what is essential to me now? So my family, definitely essential. Um, my wife and my dog, I would say that there are some journals, some sketchbooks that are really essential to me, um, some other items. But I think also there are things you can't really see. So there's a group of essential things that um, like family togetherness, um, just the love in our house. 
And these are things that are harder to photograph, not impossible, but if you identify with that or something in your community that you feel like you can't live without, um, I challenge you to try to photograph that in a way that makes it important for me or that makes me see the importance in it or makes me feel the love you have for it. Um, these are more abstract thoughts, so I encourage you to take risks. Uh, artistically, uh, please be safe out there. If you photograph in your community, please follow all of the guidelines. Um, these are also things you can do within your own house, so you don't have to leave for any of this. Um, please turn in three to five photos of things in your life, people in your life, feelings or emotions in your life that are essential. Um, pretty wide open door here. I look forward to how you interpret it. Um, thank you so much for doing this with us. This is kind of a new thing for us too, so we're excited to experiment with it. You're one of the first groups, uh, so I appreciate your uh, your creativity and your willingness to kind of accept imperfect solutions right now. Uh, please take care of one another, be safe, um, and email us if you have any questions. We're always here. Thanks. Bye. So in this series, um, kind of the same idea, but Mary Beth Heffernan, uh, started with the um, Ebola outbreak in Liberia in 2015. And so she was trying to humanize the essential workers there. And you can see that um, she's added an actual photo portrait of the person who's wearing the uh, personal protective gear. And so you see on the left, there's a worker in Liberia. And on the right, this worker is at Stanford. Um, so it humanizes the person behind the mask, but still talks about um, the crisis that's ongoing.